Hello everybody, it's Molly with All Ears and I'm here with a brand new video. This weekend has kicked off Epcot's first festival of 2021, the Festival of the Arts. So we are here going to explore everything there is to know about the festival, the food, the entertainment, the merchandise, all kinds of fun activities. I hope you're ready. I hope you're excited. Let's get in there. It's going to be beautiful, artful, magical, colorful, probably all the above. Whenever you come to an Epcot festival, you gotta get yourself a festival passport. They have them at the entrances, they have them at the merchandise shops, but this is your guide to everything. It's got all of the food booths in there, all the menus. This is where you're gonna find that wonderful walk of colorful cuisine we're gonna do. Um, this is where you can find a guide to all the activities and everything. So make sure you get a passport. It will come in very handy, I promise. Figment is here. He is one of the mascots of the festival. And this art setup is, it looks like it's on metal. And when you look at it from the center, all the figments are kind of darker, but when you change how you're standing and the light hits it differently, the figments change color. So let's look at these. They look like they're darker. If you come this way, wait for it, wait for it. The light changes. Now he's lighter and the figment in the middle is now pink. The two on the end are like blues. And then these guys are darker still. But now if we go towards them, He gets darker again, and a little pigment, and our pigment, and then now those ones are light, and these ones are dark. Isn't this cool? Returning this year, this is one of my favorite things about this festival. It's called Chalk Full of Character, and Figment, that rascal, that little wily devil, he has taken his magical chalk, and he has drawn famous Disney friends all around World Showcase. So as you're walking through the different countries, keep an eye out because you could see Abu hanging out in Morocco. You could see Jiminy Cricket. You could see the kittens from the Aristocats and they're drawn in chalk style, hidden in the countries that they would be from. Totally free, there's no map or anything like that, but this is one of my favorite things and there's at least one in each country. So we're gonna look for them today. I love, love, love this. In addition to chalk art done by Figment, there are chalk art pieces done by professionals. I know it's, it's shocking that I would say Figment's not a professional, but um, they do it frequently. You can watch them in action. Oh, these are the coolest ones. These like when you stand in the right spot, they change. This feels like it's gonna be Frozen 2 with the water horse. How fun is this? So you stand right here and you take the picture and it looks like it's 3D. It's amazing. So I'm gonna come back later and see how far along they've gotten. We are in Mexico. Okay, so I, I've already spotted our character here in Mexico. It's Dante from Coco. Look, there he is, he's so cute. But look, that's not all. Cause we've also got Spirit Dante on this side. Isn't this fun? I seriously love this and I love looking for them. To Norway, look up right here. And you can see the snow geese. Who are we going to find in China? Look who I see. It's little brother. Mulan's dog. Little brother. Kind of in between the gift shop on the lagoon side and the tea stand on the lagoon side. I found Mushu and Kriki as well. Y'all, I'm freaking out because I just saw the best character sighting yet. It's the hyenas right here on top of Refreshment Outpost. They are enjoying a hot dog that I presume they got here. For the character walk in Germany, I spotted our friend, Pascal, right outside the caramel kitchen. Look, he's having a little caramel corn snack. How cute is he? Pascal is also camouflaged himself into the sign right here. And he's painting a little sun with his tail right here as you head towards the restrooms. Cute little guy. Jiminy Cricket! There he is, cute little guy. 
headed up the stairs right here outside the wine shop. I'm in line to get something to eat at the American Adventure Kiosk. And look who I see flying near the Art of Disney. It's little Amos. Oh, how precious is he? Searching through Japan for a character friend. And I found them, but they're kind of hard to find. Got to go near the store and back it up a little bit. And look. Jelly Tony the Cat from Tokyo Disney. I was kind of hoping it would be Baymax from Big Hero 6, but I guess that's not really Japan. Whereas Duffy is like, yeah, he lives in Tokyo, so that's pretty cute. Made it to Morocco. Okay, I found a boo. Look how cute he is. You have to steal that pot, a boo. That's not nice. Continuing the chalk walk in France. I'm actually spotting someone right now. You gotta make sure to look up. You might see a Lumiere. Walking further into the pavilion, Remy, as well as his brother Emil. And as I was walking out of the pavilion, I noticed yet another set of friends. How precious are the little kids from the Aristocats? I love them. So cute. Continuing my character quest, and I want to show you these, which I adore, which were something they put out last year at the character meet and greets. That one was near Snow White, obviously. This one was near Aurora. That's my favorite one because her dress is half pink and half blue. This one was near Mulan. The other one was, of course, near Donald. So I like that they're still displaying these, even though they aren't doing character meet and greets, um, because I thought these were a really nice touch and really fun when they did the character meet and greets last year. Also, quite possibly the coolest of the character chalks is hidden in here, very sneakily. Gotta come through the maze. Look, it's the broom dog from Alice in Wonderland. Isn't that clever? Found another character. It's Peter Pan's shadow. No, I don't see actual Peter Pan anywhere. <laughs> and we're not done because the UK, much like France, has a lot of beloved characters. If you look over here at this shop, you've got Skippy and Robin Hood and Little John, a movie that does not get enough credit. Made it into Canada. This is our last country to find a character in. It's Coda from Brother Bear. He's down by the water, caught himself a salmon! That's a very underrated film. Have you seen it? Definitely let me know. I cried so hard the first time I watched it. I love it. Of course, like any good Epcot festival, one of the big draws is the food. They've got 16 different kiosks around World Showcase, and this food is literally works of art. So we're going to be sampling some of the best of the fest, some new items, some returning items. Cannot wait to see what it's going to be like. You know I love eating around a festival. Okay, headed to our first booth around the world, Pop Eats. This is always a fan favorite, and I am so excited to start eating. Here is my haul from Pop Eat. So last year they had this, it's a grilled cheese and a soup can of tomato soup. Last year they just had a classic grilled cheese. They have that again, but now they also have a French onion and bacon grilled cheese. And then they also brought back one of my favorite beers from last year. It's glittery beer. Are you seeing that? It literally is glittery. And this is, I think what dreams are made of um, for me. So had to get that again too cheese and soup time. I love a grilled cheese. I love tomato soup. It's a cool day today. This is my ultimate comfort food. So here we go. I like to dunk it right in there. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. We are starting off incredibly strong. It's a perfect grilled cheese. The caramelized onion in there reminds me of French onion soup, which is one of my favorite soups. Dipping it into this nice, slightly sweet from the tomatoes soup we can stop now because i found molly's best of the fest so i guess we're done um all my best of the fest will be cheese related probably if i had to guess 
This vegetable dazzles me with its food in both appearance, it's beautiful, and flavor. It's awesome. So now let's try this beer. Ooh, okay, so it's called a sherbet beer, and it definitely has a little bit of sweetness, but it's not too sweet. It's just got this like whisper of like, hey, this is fun. It's glitter beer. There's just gonna be a little, little something about it, you know? Also from Pop Eats, I grabbed the Popping Bubbles cocktail. It's actually just boba balls and champagne, but I wanted to share it because it's a it's 1050 and it's a very solid pour of champagne. So if you're a champagne fan, this is something fun. Yeah, it's just champagne and boba balls. I don't like boba balls that much, but I can at least watch them now. Mm. It's just the popping thing I don't like, but it's really pretty very creative and it again at ten dollars it's expensive but that's not that bad for a disney cocktail next stop mexico they always have some of my favorite food in general but always some of my favorite festival food as well so i'm excited to try something here this is a carrot margarita which sounds interesting but the cool part is they put that bubble over it and then it pops and the uh, the smoke comes out. It's really windy today, so it didn't last too long, but it's probably going to pop the minute you walk with it anyway. So if you want pictures of it, take them while they're making it. Um, and then I also got, I'm so excited about this, a chili relleno, um, which is a fried pepper and it's stuffed with steak and tomatoes and beans. And it's got this poblano cream sauce on it. And I'm so excited about it. Mexico is always my favorite for food like in life mexican food is my number one favorite um, and the mexico booth is always one of my favorites at the festival so i'm excited to try this again the frida carrot margarita it's carrot juice uh, ginger lime juice and tequila oh okay that mostly tastes like ginger it kind of almost it has a Moscow Mule vibe. I'm not really tasting carrot. A little more on that sip, but it's not like carrot in your face. That's definitely interesting. I'm trying to get a good bite here. Okay, wow. Wow. Wow, wow. Mexico has done it again. I know I should be talking but I just want to pick this pepper up and eat it big chunks of flank steak that creamy poblano sauce beans the pepper itself has a little heat the, the sauce has a little heat so if you're a totally heat averse person I'd avoid this one because I definitely feel the back of my throat but I love spice that is fantastic Mexico every time every time they dazzle me and this is one of my favorite things I think I've ever had in Mexico I had to stop at the Painted Panda, which is the China booth, because China is always one of my festival favorites. And I am trying out the Spicy Mala Shrimp. It's two shrimp. They, I was told they're legit spicy, which I'm excited about. And they come with some nudes. Lots and lots of flavor. I'm not getting super spicy yet, though. Ooh, these nudes. Look, can you see them? Have sauce on them. Maybe that's where the spice comes in. How do I eat these delicately is the question. Well, you know there's no way for me to do that, so. That's not that spicy either, so. I think they're, it's definitely got a little bit of heat and it's got a ton of flavor. I just wouldn't call it spicy, spicy. I would say China doesn't disappoint yet again, but I wouldn't say super spicy, but I would say delicious. I am trying two things from Refreshment Outpost, which is kind of the quote unquote Africa, not pavilion in between China and Germany. The first is this brown sugar stuffed pretzel. They had this at Festival of the Holidays, but now it's got banana soft serve on top instead of vanilla and chocolate sauce. I am also trying this blue beer because that's silly. Um, it is a raspberry blonde ale and I love raspberry beer, but I'm like confused why it's blue other than it's pretty. I'm not a huge fan of banana, like artificial flavor. So we'll see how this is. I'm gonna try just the soft serve first. Mm. 
Oh God. It tastes like banana artificial flavor. So if you're the kind of person that sees a yellow runt and you're like, that's the one runt I want to eat, I think you're going to love this. If you're like me and you see a yellow runt and you're like, no, thank you. I'll, I'll stick to the cherry. Well, all right. I'm going to try the pretzel now, though. Now the pretzel is a plus. It's a warm brown sugar stuffed pretzel. No complaints there. Maybe if you ask really nicely, they'll give you a different ice cream flavor. Because they do sell soft serve there. So the pretzel's a winner for me. I'm gonna try the pretzel with the with the ice cream. I can't get into it. I'm so sorry. Not for me. I cannot get past the artificial banana flavor. I'll just wash it down with the blue raspberry beer. Ooh. Okay, like I said, I love a raspberry beer. It's very tart, very refreshing. And I think they're doing a blue raspberry play. That's what it's called. So I don't know why in the world somewhere somebody was like, when we make slushies and stuff, like let's make it blue instead of pink. Like, are there too many pink and red fruits? Are they like, we already got cherry, strawberry, and watermelon, raspberry, um, you're gonna be blue now. I don't know, but that's what they've done. Um, but this beer is very good. This actually, hi there. <laughs> uh, this and the glittery one at Pop Eats are my favorites I've had at the festival. I think these are gonna be my favorites because they're a little bit more unique. They're also different but they're still really tasty. Okay, so I asked the cast members and they actually have right now for soft serve at Refreshment Outpost, they've got banana, strawberry, or a swirl. And if you ask them, you can get the, the pretzel with the strawberry or the swirl if you'd rather do that. So just something good to know. I think the next time I'm here, I'm gonna try it with strawberry because that's one of my favorite flavors of ice cream. And I bet that makes it a lot better in my opinion. But either way, that's definitely a good snack, very shareable. From Cuisine Classique, which is the Germany uh, kiosk, I got this chicken roulade, and then it's got some carrots and some vegetables and a little bacon strip right there. Mmm. That is very well cooked chicken. And I like the sauce with it. Definitely very moist. I don't think this would be my top pick for a savory, even though it's cooked really, really well. Um, and I mean, who doesn't want a bacon circle? Germany also had a, a braised short rib that might interest some of you as well. As well as a rosé flight, including a frosé, a rosé beer, and an actual rosé wine. So if you're a rosé fan, that might be something you want to check out too. So I'm breezing past Italy. Uh, nothing on Italy's menu looks that good to me. And what's a real bummer is that every year, every festival, Italy is a disappointment. Which is so upsetting because Italy normal food is so good. But, alas, nothing on the menu dazzled me. I've had friends go yesterday when the festival started. I was here, but I was eating at some of the other kiosks and they said, no go. Each of the Joffrey's locations around the park has a different specialty donut and latte pairing and you get them together. Um, this one is from the American Adventure Joffrey's and it's called the Color, Color Me Latte. So it's an M&M topped donut. And then the latte, has got Swiss dark chocolate in it, uh, as well as espresso, and then it's topped with dark chocolate and M&Ms. You can get the latte hot or iced. But each of the Joffreys has a different combination. Okay, ready for this? I don't really like donuts, which I say every time, and this will probably still be the case, but. That tastes like a donut. At Joffrey's, the, the company they partner with is called Donut King. It's a local Orlando donut shop. Cult favorite around here. So they are really good donuts. And it's really not bad if you like donuts. I actually like this latte. A latte. <laughs> why did I do that? And I'll tell you why. 
Now, I love coffee. You guys probably know that. I do not like sweet coffee. And normally when they do these, there is like the Twix one at Festival of the Holidays was so sickly sweet. I was not into it, but because they used espresso um, and probably because it's a hot latte, there's not a ton of the chocolate. It mostly just tastes like espresso with a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of cream. So I'm actually very into that. But I think these are really, really fun that they do at the Joffrey's Round. I love that it's like a specialty donut and a specialty coffee that go together. Here are my yummy bites from the American Adventure kiosk. Right here, I have a sipping chocolate flight. It's basically like liquid chocolate. Think hot chocolate, but better. A white, a milk, and a dark. They sell it non-alcoholic and alcoholic. This is the non-alcoholic version, but you can do a flight of those. And then I'm also trying this beef Wellington that looks so yummy. Yep. Oh my gosh, wow. Wow. I love the mushroom. I love the puff pastry. America wasn't a big hit for me at Festival of the Holidays, but that is fabulous. Wow. Some chocolate. I'm gonna start with the white. Oh, she's thick. Oh, but yum. Oh my gosh, it's chilly today. It's like the thickest hot chocolate you've ever had. But that is very good. Now the milk. Okay, I want to bathe in this. Wow, that is so yummy. And let's not forget the dark. The dark actually might be my favorite, which is shocking me. But wow, those are so thick, so yummy. Again, you can get them with liqueur if you want a boozy version. But this is, I would say, very shareable because this is a lot of thick chocolate times three for one person mm. but yeah those are really fun and really really delightful i'm obsessed with this this is the specialty funnel cake from the funnel cake stand in the american adventure it's a red velvet funnel cake cream cheese frosting and pixie dust which aka edible glitter and i'm literally obsessed with how beautiful this is <laughs> Red velvet funnel cake, good crunch. You can taste that chocolatey red velvet. And then the cream cheese frosting is definitely sweet. Um, it's definitely very shareable, but this is fun. I love this. I just picked up the stone garden from the Japan kiosk. And it's this little tray of red bean mousse and then you get this little cup of chocolate rocks and rice cracker pebbles and you get a fork and you're encouraged to make your own stone garden just like the one here so i'm going to start with my raking it looks like a stone garden kind of but does it taste good? That's the important question. Mmm. Yes, it does. I like the crunch from the little crackers. The mousse itself doesn't have a ton of flavor. I'm getting a rock this time. Ooh, okay, the chocolate rocks are where it's at. The rest of it doesn't have an overwhelming amount of flavor so i think this would be really fun for little kids you could tell them hey look at that make your own here's my haul from morocco well it's actually called mosaic canteen but it's in morocco uh first up this is a flatbread and it's got a fennel cream it's got sun-dried tomatoes it's got some pesto it looks delicious this is a blackberry hard cider, and this is a cake I cannot pronounce, and I'm not even gonna try, but it's an orange cinnamon cake, and this is also part of that wonderful walk of cuisine.
Mm. Mm. That's good. And that's got a lot of flavor to it. Love the sun-dried tomatoes and the fennel cream. Definitely shareable. I think you could get your less adventurous eaters to eat this because it's still pizza, but it's a little more adventurous. So it's like a bridge food. Let's try this blackberry cider. Oh, okay. That's a little sweet for me. It's good, but I preferred they had a blackberry cider at food and wine that wasn't as sweet it was more tart this one's a little more sweet so if you're a sweet drinker um, I think you'll enjoy this more but for me I like it to be a little more tart not super sweet but it is good but it's like drinking dessert in my opinion all right time to eat at a brand new booth this year this booth is located in between France and Morocco and it's called Vibrante e Vivado or Vibrante Vivado and it is themed after legendary Imagineer Mary Blair because she had the craziest, amazing use of color. So all the food is really colorful. Like, look how beautiful this food is. Brand new booth again this year. Trying a little of everything. They've got a chilled seafood cocktail, which you can see there's octopus on there and it's purple. So it's giving me major Ursula vibes, which is a little stressful. Um, but there's also some shrimp. We've got a pupusa. It is blue and it's got pork on it. There's a passion fruit mousse cake that is like so beautiful. I'm kind of at a loss for words at how beautiful this dessert is. Um, and then we've got a couple of the drinks. This one in the super cute souvenir cup, that is a coconut passion fruit smoothie, non-alcoholic, but look how great the cup is. And then I've also got a alcoholic frozen pina colada. They also had an alcoholic um, passion fruit daiquiri, but I'm more of a pineapple fan, so. Look at all that yumminess. Okay, first of all, this blue corn pupusa is part of the wonderful world of cuisine, the wonderful walk of cuisine. So we're gonna save that review for that part of the, of the video. Stay tuned for that. So we are going to start with the chilled seafood cocktail. I'm gonna eat Ursula. It's gonna feel really good to exact my revenge. Well, that is salty. I'm not a huge seafood fan, so I'm not loving that. But if you are a huge seafood fan, I think you might enjoy it. Let's try a shrimp. I do like shrimp. Now that's much better. Now, I'm not a huge seafood person, so this wouldn't be one I would get again. Um, but if you are a huge seafood person, it's a lot of seafood. And I do really like the aioli. It's got scallops, it's got shrimp, it's got that octopus. The aioli is really good. So if this is something you're into, I think you'll like it. Ooh, that aioli is fabulous. Let's go on to cocktails. This is that frozen pina colada. But yeah, that's yummy. That's a good pina colada. It's obviously sweet, but it's not super, super over the top sugary sweet. Like it tastes like they made it um, fresh and not straight from a, a pre-mix from a can or something. Now let's try this non-alcoholic. Again, look how cute this little cup is. I'm mostly picking up the passion fruit on that one, which is not my personal favorite flavor, but it's good and it's refreshing. And I'm happy I have this cup now, mostly. But yeah, oh, that is good. That is refreshing. And again, that's non-alcoholic in the cute cup. So kids, you can enjoy that one. And now I'm gonna try this cake. This little dessert is almost too beautiful to even eat, but obviously I'm going to eat it. It's a passion fruit mousse on like a cracker. Mm. I know, I just said, I don't like passion fruit that much, but that, is fantastic. I think it's the shortbread cookie that is making that so, so, so yummy. Wow. And that's beautiful. And that's so refreshing. That is fabulous. I did not expect to enjoy this that much. This may be a best of the fest dessert for Molly. Wow. That is so good. I actually cut it in half to show you. It's got dragonberry jam on the inside. I think that's why I like it so much because it's like this sweet, savory, not savory, sweet, 
tart, but not too sweet. It's really unique. It's really refreshing. I'm loving this. Here is my haul from France. Always one of my favorite booths, my favorite pavilion to eat at in general. We have a truffle croissant. Very intrigued by this. We have a returning favorite that looks a little bit different. It's a bread bowl full of melted brie cheese, which is the best thing I've ever heard. Um, this is their frozen martini. They do one of these at every festival. And then also they have a macaron trio. Yummy. First things first, bowl of cheese. Look at that. I mean, yeah, it's delicious. It's a fresh baked bowl of cheese. It's the best thing I've ever had. It's going to be on my best of the fest list again. It's so good. Now this. It tastes like a smarty. Okay, it's grape, which I don't normally like. But there's also lime. And I want to say orange, but it legitimately tastes like drinking a smarty. I recommend the lemon one or the orange one that's here year round. Okay, I'm very intrigued by this truffle. It's a black winter truffle croissant. I broke it in half and it's got like some kind of mousse in there. Truffle to me says savory, like truffle. Or is it truffle like chocolate? We're gonna find out. It's truffle like savory, which I love. What a wonder to behold. It tastes like a delicious croissant, but with truffle oil. I'm not 100% sure what the goo is inside. Ooh, what if I put, okay. Okay, I'm gonna dip it in the cheese because I'm a culinary innovator. You're welcome. That's where it's at. Truffle, cheese, bread, and now my baby macarons. Mmm. Ooh, that one's like caramel. That, ooh, and coffee. Mmm, that's a good one. This little pink and green. Oh, I think it's watermelon. That's cute. And the last one here is yellow and brown. Honey lemon, maybe? But that's a cute little shareable. But for me, number one at France, always that bread bowl. I am headed into World Show Place now. If you have followed along for the last few festivals, you'll know that they have been using this as a place for um, some entertainment offerings, as well as a couple more of the kiosks to help spread everybody out. I love that they're using it for that. Normally it's used for special events that they aren't doing at the festivals this year. Um, and so in here, we've got festival favorites. We've got painter's palette. This is what I picked up from festival faves. It's the charcuterie board as well as the coffee cocktail. It's like a coffee old fashioned, which I am here for. Okay, trying out this charcut. There's a couple different spreads on here, some big chunks of meat. Well, that's a good cheese. This is a big charcuterie, definitely shareable. Charcuteries at festivals are usually expensive. Like this one was like $14, which is a lot, but it's definitely a shareable. Now for this coffee cocktail, they it's called a coffee cocktail on the menu, but then when they rang it up, they called it a coffee old fashioned, so. I'm in love, is that, is that wrong? If that's wrong, I don't wanna be right. This is my favorite cocktail. I've maybe ever had it at a Disney festival. It's like literally like iced coffee and old fashioned had a beautiful, beautiful, delicious baby. And I'm so happy right now. Wow, if you like coffee and old fashioned, you gotta try this. It's not super, super strong and overwhelming, but you can definitely taste that it's got alcohol in it. But the coffee flavor I would say wins out. Y'all are not even gonna believe what this next drink is. I had to try it because it is so ridiculous. It is from the Painter's Palette and it is a blend of red wine and Pib Extra, the soda. Why? Well, it tastes like exactly what it is. 
And this feels like something someone in college who, who doesn't have any, like, like any knowledge of cocktails would just be like, oh, I've got a $2 bottle of wine and a can of Mr. Pib. Let's just, that'll work. This is from the Deconstructed Dish, who specializes in classic dishes, but they're presented in really unique deconstructed ways. This is the Deconstructed Reuben. So it's got a rye popover, your corned beef and your pickle, and then a Gruyere little panna cotta right there, and then a little baby Brussels sprout for your Deconstructed Reuben. Mmm. Another winner. Mmm. Mm. That corned beef is so good. Yum. And you get a lot of the corned beef. You definitely get more of the corned beef than anything else. I'm going to try this brussel. I wish it was fried. But it's still a good brussel. You've got a th tangy thousand island all over it. I'm loving this beef. Mm. This booth is always really fun. They have a deconstructed BLT. That's got pork belly, a soft poached egg, and tomato jam. Um, that one's really fun. They also have a deconstructed cheesecake that's got like a cheesecake fluff, fresh strawberries, and little biscuit crackers there. Um, they also do that deconstructed breakfast shake that I had last year, alcoholic and non-alcoholic version. And it's basically a coffee a maple shake, and then it's got bacon and a waffle crisp in it. So really, really fun, really unique. This is definitely one for, I think you're a little bit more of your adventurous eaters, because um, I don't know a lot of picky eaters that are gonna do like a soft poached egg and pork belly um and uh, a reuben this way but if you're a little more adventurous and these flavors sound good to you definitely check it out in the booth that will never leave citrus blossom is still here it's been set up since flower and garden last year um no food only drinks here it still has that cute orange board zipper the same one that you can get with that slush in it and then they have fruit wines again here if you're interested in that i have lobster poutine right here. This is from the refreshment port. It's fries topped with big chunks of lobster, a cheesy lobster bisque sauce, pickled jalapenos, and a citrus cream. Okay, I'm not the biggest lobster fan, but I am a big french fry fan. So, see how this goes. Okay, that was just a fry with the cheese sauce and the citrus cream, and that was delicious. But I'm gonna get a big chunk of lobster to show you. Oh my gosh, look at that big chunk of lobster. That's one of many. That's fabulous. That is buttery, that is creamy, that is cheesy. So if you are a big lobster fan, I feel like this is gonna be the thing you never knew you needed. Yes, please, for the jalapenos. Super creamy, definitely could be a meal. Definitely could be split between a bunch of people. I'm impressed. Okay. Now that we've enjoyed something from just about every booth, it's time for Molly's Best of the Fest. I would say my top three, four um, would be that bread bowl full of cheese in France, uh, the lobster poutine, the chili rano from Mexico, and then that uh, bacon, French onion, grilled cheese, and tomato soup from Pop Eats. Now, when it comes to drinks, my number one favorite was definitely that cold fashioned coffee cocktail. That was like my ideal drink coffee plus an old fashioned together. That's everything I could have asked for. So that's definitely my number one cocktail of the festival. I also love that glittery beer from Pop Eats as well as that blue beer was really fun over it, uh, at the refreshment outpost. Uh, for a non-alcoholic beverage, I loved that sipping chocolate over at America uh, in the America Pavilion. I guess that's not really a beverage. It's more of a dessert, but it's kind of a beverage. Either way, it was very delicious. And I liked that smoothie at um, Vibrato e Vivado because um, it comes in that super cute cup for those non-alcoholic drinks as well. I am here at the American Gardens Theater and the American Adventure Pavilion because I'm going to do the Animation Academy. This is a fun offering that they do twice a day at 12.30 and 1.30, and you can learn to draw a Disney character with a Disney character artist. I have a feeling it's going to be very similar to the one in Animal Kingdom, but I always love that class, so let's do it. Much like when they do the performances here, you can see that some rows are closed completely and then the rows will have like, please don't sit here so they can stagger everyone. Is everyone ready? Yeah. So I think uh, it's time for us to get a little goofy. So that's Woo! who we're going to draw today. Goofy, yes.
Goofy, I am so sorry for what I've done to you. This is not good. But I always have fun in these drawing classes. It was about 20 minutes and super fun. A festival favorite, especially amongst kids, but adults, you're gonna wanna do this too. It's super fun. It's called the Expression Section and it's a giant paint by numbers bureau. It's right here across from the Land Pavilion. I'm getting in line right now. I wasn't sure if they were gonna be able to do this at the festival because I wasn't sure how they deal with social distancing, but it seems like they've got everybody spaced out and it's gonna be great. This is a completely free activity you can do and you and your fellow guests are creating a giant mural. I don't know what the picture is yet, but I'll find out soon. I'm gonna do, I like this lilac color, so I'm gonna carefully grab one of those and then grab one brush. I'm not gonna touch any other ones. Okay, so once you get your paint and your brush, you go over here to get in line and they'll tell you which section you're gonna be painting at and they've got everybody spaced out when you're painting. All right, so I'm gonna be at section two and you can see they blocked off section three and section one and then they have people on the even numbers today. And the cast member said they rotate which sections they're doing odds or even so that way the whole mural gets painted, but also everybody's safe and distance. So I'm looking for fives in this section and there's a lot of them. One, two, three, four, ta-da! There's my five. I did it. Once you're done, you get a bookmark and it's got the completed mural on it. So I must have painted something around like the pylons in the sky right here. So that's pretty cool. Really fun activity. Your kids will love it. And I enjoy it too. So the spin art you can do right here, it's really fun. It'd be a really fun thing to do if you've got kids. It's $19 for the canvas. Um, you can choose up to four colors and then they can put pixie dust on it at the end if you'd like a little bit of glitter. Um, but you can have one person do the biking while one person puts in the colors and then you could switch. Um, she said that a lot of people do like sports teams colors or a favorite Disney character inspired, that sort of thing. Um, and then they dry it for you. And again, it's $19. Just a fun activity you could do with the kiddos um, or a fun, you know, create your own art while you're here. With any Disney festival comes new merchandise. So I'm in Mouse Gear to check it out. Uh, they also have festival marketplaces around World Showcase. Um, you can also find some of this merchandise in Disney Traders as well as um, World Traveler. But we're at Mouse Gear. Okay, here we go. All right, there is a Figment Pass holder set that has the Dream Finder on it. There's a phone case for that. Um, you have this very cute hat. This is not pass holder, Festival of the Arts. And then the inside of the brim, it's colorful and figments on there. You've got some ornaments, pass holder and non. A little tray if you want to carry your things around. Here's the pass holder shirt. Dream Finders on there. So, so cute. Here is the spirit jersey, always a big ticket item. It says Figment loves pigment. And then you've got this little cartoon figment on it. That's the front. I'm sorry, that was the back. Here's the front. I love the logo this year and I love the colors. You've got a Tervis tumbler. Dream finders on that one. So cool. Non pass holder phone case, very cute. Donald and Mickey painting figment. You've got some magnets right here. We've got this water bottle. I love this mug as well. It says eat, sleep, art, repeat. And then it's got figment painting on the front. Very, very cute mug. The magic bands are behind the counter at Mouse Gear, so you just have to ask. So there's a pass holder one here and the classic one here. Here is the not pass holder one. It's got Donald on one side and then Mickey on the other side. And then the pass holder one has got figment on one side and the dream finder on the other side. They're both $34.99. I have loved the Wyland Gallery since I was a little child. They have a Wyland painted wall in Atlanta where I grew up with a bunch of whales on it downtown. And I used to always make my parents drive past it anytime we were anywhere near downtown. So I've always loved them because I love marine life and that's a big part of what they do. So I'm loving that they're here. How cool are these? Do I need this whale statue in my home? 
it's possible. It's possible that I do. Look at that awesome Steamboat Willie. This is so fun. We have a little more Wyland gallery action over here. Look how awesome this is. OMG, look at this table. It's Beauty and the Beast. This is amazing. Here is another really cool art studio. And what you'll kind of notice is they do have some cues um, at these so not too many people are in the galleries at one time. But this is Marvel Fine Art Studio. Whoa, there's a Spider-Man signed by Stan Lee. Um, do I need this in my home? Look how cute Baby Groot is. Aww. We've got some of the Avengers and then it says, enough said. And look, even little Ant-Man's there. That's a really cool piece. In all these galleries, usually they have prints as well. So if you see something you like on the wall and you don't want to drop the money for the big giant framed version, you may be able to find a print of it. I'm checking out the Wonderground Gallery tent now. This is one of those popular Disney galleries. They feature all kinds of different Disney artists. Um, wait, do I need this? Wonderground Gallery is uh, displayed in Disney a lot. You can find pieces from them at a lot of different places year round. One thing I love about Wonderground Gallery is that they sell postcards of a lot of the artwork too. So if you're not wanting to take home a $300 canvas, you can take home like a five or six dollar postcard to frame that, put it on your desk. Uh, but it's like a really cute and very unique and inexpensive way to bring home some of the art you see at the festivals. My word, I need this. I, I legitimately do. I, okay, the canvas is $1.99. That feels a bit extreme. But there's also the print. That's $39.99, or I can take my own advice and buy the postcard for $5.99. Let's do that. Oh, you may have heard of Jared Mar Maruyama. I believe I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but he does fabulous artwork in this very like happy, childish, cartoonish. I don't even know how to describe it, but he's fabulous. He does a lot of stuff for Disney. And one thing I need to be sure to tell you, if you are going to spend a little bit more on art, you don't have to carry it around all day. They are doing what they're calling art holds. If you spend $150 minimum at any one location, they will send it either to the front for package pickup or to International Gateway. You can pick it up at either 4 p.m. or 7 p.m. That is not for Disney merchandise. It's not package pickup. It's only for artwork. And again, it's called an art hold, $150 minimum, and you can do that. Make sure to talk to them at the booths if you're going to be buying art. Here is our figment brush with the master's map. So... We've got our map here of every different country. And then on the back, we've got stickers of works of art, famous works of art. But when you find them in the countries, it's not just going to be the Mona Lisa. It's going to be the Mona Figment. So Figment has put himself into this artwork. So that's how you know you found the right thing. Um, and then once you find it, you put your sticker on the corresponding space. And then once you filled it all out, you can head to Disney Traders, which is right there. One of those shops right as you enter World Showcase, or you can do the one at the International Gateway, that's the World Traveler Shop, and they will give you a prize. So we're gonna be filling this out throughout our journey today. I'm not gonna show you every single one, because I don't wanna spoil it, but I'll show you where a couple of them are, and I'll show you what the prize is. Um, these maps are $7.99, you can get discounts on them. <laughs> Looking for Figment. Figment, where are you? Figment.
<gasps> figment. So whenever you find the figments, he's gonna have this beautiful figment frame and then landscape near the volcano figment. Oh look, the volcano is spitting out figment. All right, we found Mexico. Y'all, I just rode Grand Fiesta Tour while I was in there because why wouldn't I? Donald Duck's animatronic <laughs> is gone and it has been replaced by a bush with a sombrero on it. It's the wildest thing I've ever seen. I have no idea how long this will stay this way, but OMG, I can't believe what my eyes just saw. That is hilarious. <laughs> my finished pigment map that I'm moving around very quickly so you can't see the answers. <laughs> I finished my scavenger hunt. All right, congratulations. The Thank you. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> and now, come over here. Which one would you like? Oh, how cute. I picked figment because it's his scavenger hunt, but they all come with Spaceship Earth as part of the puzzle, which is really cute. Let's talk entertainment at this festival, or as Disney likes to call it, the performing arts. That's one thing I love. They call it the visual arts, which is all the artistry and the galleries that you can look at around, the performing arts, which is your entertainment, and then the culinary arts, which is your food. So we're talking performing arts. There are a couple really cool things that you can look forward to. You've got the Jamiters. They are still here. They are performing in Canada. In the American Adventure Pavilion, you've got Mariachi Cobre. Um, also, you've got Defying Gravity, which are acrobats. Also in World Showplace, you've got a pianist again. as well as on certain days, right now it's Thursday through Sunday, you've got Art in Motion, where Trevor Carlton, who's a Disney artist, paints a Disney character in just a few minutes while jamming out to music right before your eyes. You've also got the Voices of Liberty and they're doing the Disney songbook. So they're gonna be singing songs from some of your favorite Disney classics, which I'm really looking forward to seeing a little bit later. Be our guest, put our service to the test. Tie a napkin round your neck, Sherry, and we provide the rest. To the Every time I see them, this is my reaction. Whether they're singing out of the Great American Songbook or the Disney Songbook or Holiday Classics. Woo, my eyeballs are leaking. Anyway, check them out if you're here, if you get the chance to see them, they're delight. They did a Moana medley, touched my soul. It's lovely. A very fun photo op that they have brought back this year are these gigantic artworks that you can put yourself into so they have these all over the park this one is right here outside of mission space um, it's some van gogh work but they've got these all over the place and you can get in there and have someone take a picture of you as if you're part of the artwork in addition to the cool put yourself in the famous source of art photo ops they have these painted on a lot of the construction walls everywhere last year they just had them over by the land but this year you can see them on lots of different walls and it's these really great butterfly wings that make for the best photo if you go stand right there in the middle of the wings have someone snap your photo it makes for a very instagramable choice i would be remiss if i didn't show you this section of artwork as well on the walls i love that they use the construction walls for something beautiful um, but these are artist renditions of classic epcot pavilions and attractions so Jimmy Pickering and Morgan Lee Richardson have done this artwork. Their spaceship Earth, the land, 
horizons. Universe of energy. I wish all rides had theme songs still. The Living Seas. You know I love that shark one. World of Motion. And Journey into Imagination. These are really, really fun. Really, really cool. I love that Morgan Richardson one right there of Figment. But both are beautiful. Look how cute Figment is there. Another of the beautiful photo ops here outside the Imagination Pavilion. And if you ever get in there and you're like, I don't know how to pose. How do I put myself inside this? Don't worry. When you're in here, it says pose like Venus if you'd like. You don't have to, you can do whatever you want, but that's the original. All right, but are you ready for the best photo op ever? It's right here on the construction wall across from Journey into the Imagination. And it's Figment Wings. There's a bunch more of those fun butterfly wings on this wall as you walk into World Showcase. And I gotta say, I think this one is my favorite of the butterfly wings. One thing I will see about the photos is they don't have a photo pass person here, so you're gonna have to have someone in your family take your picture for you. So just keep that in mind when you're ready to pose. There is a food walk again this year at the Festival of the Arts. These are those walks that are in the back of your festival passport. And if you get a certain or a certain items, if you purchase them and enjoy them, get stamps at each of the booths that you're at, you get a completer prize. This year is the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. So each of the different food items is a different color of the rainbow, which is really, really cute and really, really fun. And we're going to go do the walk right now. The red square on the culinary walk is Remy's Ratatouille, which is so cute that they're literally making the dish from the film. That is so flavorful. This is a plant-based option. Now my dairy loving heart would love a little cheese on it. But I like they made that this one. Everyone can enjoy. For our orange square circle on the wonderful walk of cuisine, it's this beautiful orange cake from Morocco. I for sure cannot pronounce the name of the cake, but they say the description is as an orange cinnamon cake. And cutting it open, it's got this like chocolate mousse. So it's like orange chocolate mousse. And then it's got this sponge cake under it. I'm not tasting a ton of cinnamon. I mostly taste the orange chocolate mousse, which I'm a fan of that combination. Really yummy. Definitely something a little different. This is the green one. And this is a pistachio cake. And it's got some cherries as well. Okay. I'm into that. And I didn't think I really would be, but I do like pistachio. And now the mousse. Ooh, that is tart. Oh my gosh. I was not prepared for the tartness level of that. Together is where the real magic happens. This is definitely not something I would have picked had it not been on the culinary walk, but now that I'm eating it, I'm really glad I am. For blue on the wonderful walk of cuisine, it's this blue corn papusa from the Vibrante Vado. Okay, mm, mm hmm mm hmm Took a second for me to really get the corn flavor and the spice from the aioli. It's all served on this corn, like, cookie almost, consistency-wise, but not flavor-wise. That is so good. Okay, here is the final item on the walk. It is this beautiful rose panna cotta from the Masterpiece Kitchen, which is in the Canada Pavilion. But isn't that gorgeous? This festival has the most beautiful food. It's unbelievable. Mmm. Oh, wow. You can really taste the rose. Like, it eats like, it tastes like I'm eating a flower, which I literally am. It's a vanilla, rose water, and pistachio panna cotta. The pistachio little crumbles really highlight this whole thing. Like it wasn't really singing for me until then. Very shareable, very beautiful dessert. It's been really fun to try all this stuff. Once you finish your walk and have all of your stamps, you can come here to Decadent Delights, where there is a window right here for you to pick up your prize for completing the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. 
This cookie you can only get by completing the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine. Just kidding. Secret menu, it's not listed, but you can actually just buy this cookie for $3. So if it doesn't feel like you wanna do the whole walk and you just want this cute cookie or your kid wants it or you've got two kids or something like that, you can buy another one for $3. But I'm gonna dig into my cookie now. It's just a classic Disney sugar cookie, but the cutest prize of all. You don't have to complete the walk in one day. If you're an annual pass holder, you're gonna spend a couple days at the festival. Don't worry about eating everything in one day. Just keep your booklet. And if you start it and don't wanna finish it, there's no harm in that either. But I do think it's a fun way to try some new things. One thing I wanna point out about the wonderful walk of colorful cuisine is that um, if you have an allergy or dietary restrictions or you don't wanna try all five of these things or you've got multiple people in the party playing, you can get any combination of these five things. So if you wanna get two of the blue corn pupusa and two pistachio cakes and then one Remy's ratatouille and not even get the cake in Morocco or the thing in Canada, you can do that. It has to be just any five of these items to get the redemption cookie. Well, friends, that is a wrap on my 2021 Festival of the Arts video. I hope you had fun following me along. I hope I answered your questions about the festival. Are you headed to this one this year? Let us know in the comments. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Instagram at AltEarsNet. And until next time, I'm Molly, and it's been magical and very colorful. Want to see more of my videos? Click over here. Want to subscribe? You can do that right here. And also, ring that notification bell to make sure you get instantly notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for following. See you real soon.